I came the black way. I'm black. And as I told you all of my school days, we had the poorest equipment, poorest buildings. We walked regardless to the weather. Where the others had a bus with two children on it and a driver with 18 and 20 of us walking. But never become discouraged. We went to school at Hopewell Elementary School from the first grade through eighth grade with one teacher teaching all subjects, 80 students in attendance, grades from preschool to eighth grade for one teacher. When I was in the third grade, the school had one door, two windows facing each other, and one window in the back. No ceiling whatsoever. We could look up and see the metal roof and the cross pieces. We had to take turns sitting near the heater to keep our hands and feet warm. Move every few minutes. When I was in the third grade, the trustees applied for the Rosenwald Fund so that the children in the South could have a better opportunity in getting an education. Snow, hail, rain, whatever it was, my parents always said, go to school because I didn't have the opportunity. My mother and father went to school when the state funded three months, December, January, in February for my parents, for me, six months was all I ever had in elementary school. From the first through the third, we went in a dilapidated school. After third grade, we got the Rosenwald School, which was the best that we ever had. For the first time in my life, we were comfortable in school, had desks to sit in. Prior to that, we had pews out of the church to sit in. But after we got to Rosenwald Farm and the beautiful building, our parents bought desks for us, 20 little ones, 20 larger ones, and 20 big desks. So we had a comfortable desk, a warm classroom, and we made the best of it. Rose above it all. Rose above it all. When I finished the eighth grade at that Rose Wall School, my, I had the highest average of anybody in that school. But the foundation was laid there for me. In the church next to that school is where I got my early religious training. Went to Sunday school, was a member of the choir, whatever it was. I grew up in that church next to the school. So all that I am, or ever hope to be, I owe it all to Hopewell Church and School. All that my parents didn't train me with, I learned it in Hopewell School.
So my name, full name was Theodore Roosevelt Britton Jr. It was born in North Augusta, South Carolina, October 17, 1925. During the Depression, and I'm talking about basically from 1930 to 1936, um, there was very little money around for anything, especially for school or education. And uh, the time, sign of the times was that at that time, there was not a great deal of concern for education for black students, especially. I've read a lot about Julius Rosenbaum, and I'm always grateful, in a sense, for what he did for so many of us. I don't know where I would have gone to school had it not been for Julius Rosenbaum building at that school in North Augusta. It was the only school. It was the only school. Everybody went there. It was um, next to what was then called Young Hammond Grove. It's now called North Augusta Baptist Church. It was a small school, four rows, and um, there were four grades. Once you finished the fourth grade, out you went. Of course, for many people, that was the end of the road for them. They didn't go any further. And um, that's something that, um, as I reflect back on what's called the Rosenwald schools, those schools served a great purpose, but it meant that a lot of the people, including my mother and father, many of those persons who were born around 1900 would often say, well, I went to the third or fourth grade. And the reason is because once they finished the third or fourth grade in the Rosenwald school, there was no place to go. So that was the limit of their schooling. So in my case, um, by this time, they had, they had, there had been a, a second school built uh, that started about the seventh grade. Maybe it started a little bit earlier. Uh, I remember it so well because the early arrivals had to start a fire, start the fire in the stove, and the second or set of arrivals had to get the switches. And you couldn't get a switch that would break. You had to get the switches that would bend when, when the teachers hit you. There were simple schools. Teachers probably were high school level. They did the best they could. He was a man who made lots of money. But instead of boasting about his money, uh, simply um, looking out strictly only for his family or something, he chose to put it back into the community. And um, why he chose to, to concentrate on black students, I'll never know, maybe. But on the other hand, he was, he was inspired to use his money just to build schools. And sometimes I go, as I drive about here in the South, I see buildings that automatically remind me that that's a Rosenwald school. It may be deserted now, just a little building and even when I go through North Augusta and I go past this little church, uh, North Augusta Baptist Church, and I see this tiny little building, for most people, it's just a little building. They never, they never wonder, I'm sure, as to why it's so close to the church. But if they ask me, I can tell them. That was the schoolhouse serving this section. Yeah. And that was a Rosenwald school. I served in the Marine Corps during World War II and also part of the Korean War. Um, and in the course of it, um, we, we, was, we were in a segregated camp. Uh, we were not, in fact, it, so much of our early life in the Marine Corps was segregated. And it wasn't until 1949 that that camp, which was then called Montfort Point, was closed down. Well, for those of us who served in that segregated environment, um, we were ultimately awarded the Congressional Gold Medal by the U.S. Congress, signed by the President, President Obama, and give it to us. Uh, so this is a rep representative of it. And um, I can read what's on the back of it, which is for, um, for perseverance, for outstanding perseverance, and um, courage that inspired social change in the Marine Corps. 